If you were the leader of a fascist regime, how would you combat ideologically opposed art? You could hide it, rip it, burn it, tear it to shreds, um, dump it, you could toss it up a tall building, or you could, like the Nazis did in 1937, show it off to the entire nation. In the heart of Bavaria in the summer of 1937, one could visit two grandiose art exhibitions. The first was titled The Great Exhibition of German Art, and it displayed Aryan art. The other one was called Degenerate Art. The Degenerate Art Exhibition warped and twisted the original messages of the artworks and mocked them as pathetic in front of the German public. The Nazis even hired actors to mingle in with the crowds and exclaim loudly, look at this filth, or isn't this horrible? The art was seen as something frivolous, yes, even obscene. The German youth was not to be poisoned by it, which is why the Nazi party declared that only above 18 year olds were allowed to enter the exhibition. But how does one quantify what is degenerate and what is Aryan art? You see, classifying something as degenerate was rather easy. Anything that was experimental, colorful, overly subjective, defective, or, as Hitler put it, unfinished. Here's an example of what Hitler considered unfinished. One of these artists was an expressionist by the name of Ernst Ludwig Kirchner. In this artwork here, he painted his reaction to being cast out. He blurred half of his face and blocked his hands as to show that he's bound. He also added a red swastika in the background which reflects his status. One year after finishing his artwork, Kirchner commits suicide. But how is good Aryan art defined? What seemed like a clear-cut decision to the outside world was in reality a hard-fought battle within the Nazi elite. Many top Nazis were big modern art collectors. Goebbels had modern art all around his house and study, and many of the artworks that he owned would later end up in the Degenerate Art Exhibition. Himmler enjoyed Germanic tribalistic style paintings, and Rosenberg liked rural romantic landscapes. Hitler was infuriated. He hated modern art and expressionism and countrysides he considered frivolous. Goebbels pulled a 180 and supported the new Aryan art and so did Rosenberg reluctantly. Himmler, however, wouldn't budge. Throughout the war he saw a fat lot of art right behind Hitler's back. So finally, it had been decided what the Nazis would consider ideologically opposed degenerate art, but who was to bear the proud title of Aryan? 
Aryan art is weird. It feels like it's more defined by what it isn't than what it is. Impressionism, for example, can always be recognized by its artistic style. For Aryan art, this is more difficult, however, because it spans several styles. That being said, there are a few key aspects most Aryan artworks have in common. Usually the sub subjects of the paintings are rendered very realistically with human proportions as opposed to the sketchy style of modern art. Furthermore, much of Aryan art is based on German epics like Friedrich or the Nibelungenlied, which Hitler liked so much. Themes like family, fatherland or heroism were central. It was also very important to Hitler to display the Aryan Übermensch in all of his glory. Furthermore, Aryan art depicted clear gender roles. Women were supposed to take care of the kids and keep a peaceful household, whereas men were supposed to be strong with a heroic mindset, protecting their family. Aryan art, one could argue, was seen less of legitimate art by the Nazi regime and more as a propaganda tool to shape German culture and thinking. The Nazis really couldn't have taken power at a better time. Up until the 1930s, the German people really didn't have any exposure to media and culture. <clears throat> but it was at this time that things like movies with sound, newspapers and radio broadcasts uh, became more and more available to the general public. So when the Nazis rose to power, they made use of this modern technology. Just as propaganda posters showed heroic soldiers or movies depicted the trickery of the Jews, the degenerate art exhibition was to make fun of artworks not tol tolerated by the regime. This is why the exhibition was even held and why it was free for everyone. The Nazis wanted to expose as many people as possible to exactly that kind of seductive propaganda. We very much hope you've enjoyed that video essay. If you would like to support what we're doing here at Stargazer, please subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. That's really the best way you can help us. If you would like to go one step further, and support our future f uh, short film endeavors. We have an apparel store. We make cool filmmaking and uh, photography inspired t-shirts. We'll have a link to that down in the description. Um, if you're interested, just have a look around, see if you like anything. If you don't, that's all right too. Take care, we'll see you in the next video. And we're rolling. Leading up to the degenerate. Then you're gonna subscribe.